a, a different aspect of convergent series. Um, what we're going to do here is learn how to estimate the error in using partial sums. Um, so we're not going to learn any new convergence tests here. A, a partial sum, we haven't talked about that a whole lot, but that's simply using the first um, so many terms to estimate a sum. Um, for example, if I wanted to use only the first four terms to estimate this sum, that would be um, for 1 over n squared. My terms are 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared. And then we would add those four terms together. And we will be allowed to use a calculator on this, so we'll punch this in the calculator. And we get 205 over 144, or that's approximately... 1.423 uh, and that would be the first four that's a, a partial sum and the notation we use is s sub 4 um, which just means it's the partial sum with first four terms uh, the error in using a partial sum is the sum of all of the ignored terms so all of the terms I'm ignoring here with uh, be 1 over 25 plus 1 over 36, plus 1 over 7 squared, plus 1 over 8 squared, um, and so on and so forth. The sum of all of these terms that I've ignored, those are the, is, uh, represent the error. Whatever I've ignored is the error in this estimation right here. Because uh, we do know this will converge. We could use the integral test to prove that this converges, or you could just say it's a p-series. Um, so it does equal a certain sum, uh, and the error is all of the ignored terms. So uh, we also call that the remainder. So there's a couple of terms in what the partial sum means. Um, here's some notations that I'm going to use. So here's sum or sum. Check that out. Nice little pun. <laughs> Look at there. Me being all literary-like. Uh, let's see, some notations we're going to use. Uh, if I just say S, that's the actual sum of the series. Uh, S sub N is what we just talked about. That's the partial sum using only the first so many terms. R sub N is the sum of all of the remaining terms. So uh, going back to this example, this error, I could call it the remainder R sub N. Um, and the actual error... Uh, is the absolute value of those of that sum. So um, if it were a negative series or something like that, then the actual error is always measured with a positive number. So uh, the sum of the remaining terms is R sub n. You take the absolute value of that to get the actual error. Most of the time, the sum of the remaining terms is positive anyway. The only time it isn't is in the case of an alternating series or a negative series. So there's a little bit of notation that we're going to be using. Um, the way we estimate errors depends on the type of series we are looking at. Um, starting with geometric and telescoping series, those are the only two series that you can actually find the sum of. We don't need an approximation. So in the case of those two, we won't be estimating error. We will just find the actual sum. So we're not going to worry about those two series. Um, if you have a series that converges by the integral test, uh, this is one of the more difficult error estimations. Um, this error in using the first n terms, so the partial sum s sub n, has this error. The error is less than the area from n to infinity of f of x. Um, and f of x is simply the series that we're using. Um, to try to explain what that means, uh, let's say that I have some series a sub n, and I know it converges, and these are my terms. So I have a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus, and it goes on forever. So let's say we're looking at that series, and we're starting at 1 and going to infinity. If I want to find the first, the sum of, let's say the first three terms. The sum of the first three terms will be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. Well, if something converges by the integral test, the idea behind it was that the individual terms all sit underneath the actual curve. So if I wanted to find the partial sum, I would add these three terms right here. That's s sub 3 if I add those rectangles. And the error is what I'm omitting. So all of this represents my error. Error, let's put an O in there. And if you look at that error, you can see 
that the error, if I add up all of those terms, the area that those rectangles take is less than the actual area under the curve. So from 3 to infinity, that represents the error, and I can tell that that error is less than the actual sum. That will be r sub 3. The actual area under the curve from 3 to infinity. Uh, so we would set up an improper integral, and the error in using the first three terms is less than the actual area under the curve from whatever n is to infinity. Uh, so let's do a couple of examples with this. Uh, the main thing you need to remember is this part. I thought I would throw in the proof really quick, which that's a very crappy proof. I just kind of halfway did it, but uh, a brief graphical explanation is better than calling that a proof, I guess. Uh, let's see. Find the sum of the first five terms, S sub 5, and the error in using S sub 5 to estimate this sum. Uh, so S sub 5 is going to represent, uh, that would be these first five terms. So we will add these together. This is S sub sub 5. And so let's punch that in real quick and get that answer. There we go. So there's the sum. I punched that in the calculator and I got this. And then it says estimate the error. I said find the error. I should say an error approximation. You cannot find the exact error. So we're going to find the error approximate, uh, the approximate error. Um, if you could find the exact error, then we could find the um, exact sum, and you cannot do that unless it's telescoping or geometric. So my error is going to be represented by all of these terms. All of those terms represent the error, the remainder, uh, and that is less than or equal to the, the actual area under the curve 1 over x squared. And I use the first five terms, so from 5 to infinity. That's not an infinity. That would be an 8. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, and we would set up a uh, an improper integral to evaluate that. So let's do that real quick. So that would be the limit as t approaches infinity 5 to t of x to the negative 2. So we'll work that out. That'd be x to the negative 1 over negative 1 evaluated from 5 to t. Let's see. I'm going to call that 1 over x. It just looks better to me. Move that x to the bottom. Um, that will be negative 1 over t minus negative 1 over 5. And as t approaches infinity, um, this becomes 0 plus 1 fifth, or my error is less than 1 fifth, or 0.2. Uh, so my error is actually pretty bad. So... Um, my error uh, of using, I keep putting n in there, that's r sub 5. My error in using the first five terms, I know that the very largest the error can be is 0.2. Now it may not be, that may not be how far off I am from the actual answer, but this sum, that means the actual area, or the actual sum, therefore the actual sum, which is s, uh, could be anything as low as 1.4636, 1.4636, um, or it could be as high as uh, 1.626636. And I simply added my, my possible error. So my sum is somewhere between those two terms uh, because that was the approximation with an error of less than 0.2. So that means the actual sum is going to be somewhere between those two. We just don't know exactly where it is. Uh, so there, these are the two answers for the question that I put up there. And that's just a little bit of extra work that I decided to throw in spontaneously because I'm crazy like that. I'm just a spontaneous man doing calculus. All right, uh, let's see, another integral test type question. How many terms are needed to approximate this with an error of less than 0 0.01? Uh, and this would converge by the integral test. It is a p-series, but we have to look at it from the integral test perspective. Uh, now, here's the thing. I don't know how many terms it's going to take. So we're going to say uh, we need to know how many terms in terms. And I need the error in using those n terms to be less than 0 0.01. And I know that the error in using n terms is also less than um, the 
area from n to infinity of my function, 1 over x cubed, dx, and I need an error. I want that integral to equal 0 0.01. So that's what we have to work out. Uh, let's set this integral up and as an improper integral. So I'll leave the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from n to t. n to t, huh, get it like entity? Oh, whatever, okay. Uh, x to the negative 3 dx. Solve that. That'd be x to the negative 2 over negative 2 from n to t, which is what? Negative 1 over 2x squared from n to t. Plug in our t and n, so negative 1 over 2t squared minus a negative 1 over 2n squared. And when I plug in infinity for t, the first term zeroes out. And that's 1 over 2n squared equals 0 0.01, because we did want the error to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. So that's 0 0.01 is coming from there. And we will solve this part in the calculator. Um, so let me do that real quick, and we'll get n to be 7.071. So here's, <clears throat> here's what n ended up needing to be to get this error. Uh, that means the seventh term didn't quite do it. I need to go up to the eighth term. So I'll need eight terms because uh, you cannot have a part of a term. You either have one or you don't, and seven wasn't enough. So I needed a little bit more than seven, so we'll have to go all the way to the eighth term to get the desired accuracy for this problem. Uh, so, uh, let's see. It won't all fit on one page. I could shrink it up. Let me do that. There we go. Now it's all on one page. Uh, so there's the integral test error, and that's the harder one that we're going to be doing. We're only going to be doing two right here. Uh, the alternating series is very easy, because I said so right there. See? Uh, if you have an alternating series that converges, then the error in using the first n terms to estimate the actual sum is less than the first omitted term. So uh, the error in the first n terms is less than the next term in the sequence. Uh, and to put that into action, to show you what that means, uh, let's find the sum of the first five terms for this alternating series, and that series does converge. Uh, so I will need to write out my first five terms. So this sum is going to be, uh, if I plug in 1, negative 1 to the first is negative 1 over 1 cubed plus 1 is 2. The next term is going to be positive 1 over 2 cubed is 8 plus 1 is 9 minus 1 over 3 cubed is 27 plus 1 is 28 plus 1 over 4 cubed is 64 plus 1 is 65 minus 1 over 5 cubed is so 125 plus 1 is 126 plus 6 cubed is 216 plus 1 is 217 uh, and that would be a positive term. Um, and that's as far as I needed to go. So the sum of the first five terms is this sum right here. So S sub 5 is that. And we'll throw that in the calculator real quick. There, I got that decimal, negative 0.417155. And I choose to carry these out a, a little bit more than usual. Usually I start stop at the third decimal. Um, but since I don't know what the accuracy is, I like to carry it on out several more just in case I'm accurate to like the fifth or sixth decimal. Uh, now the error in an alternating series is very simple. You simply look at the first omitted term. So the error, my remainder in using my um, first five terms, it is less than 1 over 217, which is 1 over 217 as a decimal is going to be 0 0.0046. Uh, so there's my approximation using the first five terms, and this is the largest possible area. So um, the actual sum, if I wanted to go that one extra step uh, that I did earlier for number three, the actual sum I know it's at the least uh, negative 0.417155. That's less than the actual sum, 
which is at the very most negative 0.417.55 plus that being plus 1 over 217. And I'll punch that in. And I'll do that in thinking one. Negative 0.417155 plus 1 over 217 is negative 0.41255. And that's going to go right here, negative 0.41255. So the actual sum sits somewhere between those two decimals. We don't know exactly what the sum is, but I know it's somewhere between those two. Uh, last one, number four, how many terms are needed to approximate this with an error less than 0 0.001? Uh, let's see what I would do here. Um, Let's see, uh, I'm going to have to write out the first so many terms. So uh, if I plug in 1, that would be negative 1 over 1 factorial, which is 1, plus negative 1, that would be positive 1, over 2 factorial, minus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, minus 1 over 5 factorial, plus 1 over 6 factorial, minus 1 over 7 factorial, and we'll keep carrying this out some. That might be enough. I'll go to 8 factorial. I'm not sure how far I need to go. Ah, oh, what the heck, we'll go all the way out to 10 factorial. 9 factorial plus 1 over 10 factorial. And I need an error less than 0 .001. That means I want to find the first omitted term that is smaller than this. Find the first term. That is less than 0 0.001. And so we will simply start plugging these in the calculator one by one until we get one that has uh, that desired decimal value. And so uh, just looking here, I know that 3 factorial is 1, 6, 4 factorial is 124, 5 factorial is 1 over 120, and 0 0.001. That's one tenth for the first decimal, one one hundred. That's one one thousandth. So I'm looking for something smaller than one over one thousand. Uh, six factorial is one over seven twenty. Um, I'm betting seven factorial does it. I don't have all my factorials memorized. Should I? Uh, yeah, seven factorial is five thousand forty. Okay, so there is the one that gives me the desired decimal accuracy. So I would find the sum of the first six terms. I'll find the sum of the first six terms, and that would give me an error less than 1 over 5040, uh, which is, I'll punch that in just to get a decimal to make myself happy. 1 divided by 5040 is, oh, geez, I didn't punch that in right. Oh, my goodness! is a oh, stupid calculator. Why does it do scientific notation? 0 000, uh, 0.000198. So that does give me the desired accuracy. Um, gives me a lot more accuracy than I actually wanted. Uh, 1 over 720, if you punch that in and got a decimal, it's 0 0.0013 or 0 0. One four, which isn't enough. That's at slightly more than 0 .001. So I did need to carry on and get that next term. So we'll use the first six terms. So there we are. That's a couple of examples of estimating error errors with convergence series.